Hi, Ulrich. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, let's look at the situation in Ukraine right now. These ceasefires have been confusing, along with evacuations, because, I mean, what, we, what we're seeing right now is there has been a fierce battle, and only after that did Russia again say, okay, we'll have a three-day ceasefire now. And it's been unclear whether those ceasefires are even viable because there's been Russian shelling throughout. What is Russia doing here? Why doesn't it just let the civilians go and then continue the fight? Well, there have been so many situations in which we were sitting here and speculating about what are the motives, what are the objections, what are the, the goals of the war. And this is, again, such a situation. There's nothing that Russia can really gain from it other than spreading confusion not only in Ukraine, but also in the pluralist debates that we have in the West about what's the point, what could be done, what sanctions are the best response to this. So when you look at R Russia's progress on the ground, for a while it appeared that they were taking large areas in the east and south of Ukraine, looking to make a bridge essentially across the entire bottom part of Ukraine all the way over west to Moldova. But now there are reports that Russians are losing ground in some of those areas, showing that they're still ineffective even after more than 60 days of this war. Well, I think everyone in the West was taken by surprise how bad the military performance of an army is that everyone expected to be one of the most powerful in the world. Apparently, this is not the case. There have been different explanations like corruption within the army and also bad strategic planning and low motivation. I'm not a military expert, so I cannot be part of that speculation. But I also don't think that this is a war on territory. This is a war that Russia declared against the West. And this is only a proxy conflict in Ukraine to fight Ukraine becoming a Western partner and being part of a beauty contest in which Ukraine becomes the better version of Russia, which will make people in Russia think that this is actually the better way for us. And that will destabilize the authoritarian system in Moscow. Russia is now the most sanctioned country in the world. We've also heard conflicting uh, statements from Vladimir Putin and other Russian officials on whether they're willing to continue talks and what talks would require from Ukraine. Do you see any glimmer of top Russian leadership being willing to make a deal at this point? Well, with everything Putin has done, and which is so confusing for us to understand what the rationale behind it, it is a rational strategy. And the only way we have to influence his rational calculation is of, of the cost of war and also impose sanctions that have long-term implications. This is the only thing we can do. And whether this leads to a change of attitude or whether it ends the killing is another question. All right, Ulrich, good to talk to you. Thanks so much for your insight.